Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. The United States Army Financial Management Command, known at the time as the United States Army Finance Command, or use of FINCOM, was created in 1998 under the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller, or ASA FMNC, to provide liaison and service between the field, major Army commands, and the Defense Finance and Accounting Service, or DFAS. Use of FINCOM was also responsible for overseeing all finance, accounting, and tactical unit management issues which impacted the Army community. This included DFAS policy guidance, as well as systems design, redesign, and implementation. Additionally, the command performed on-site assistance and assessment visits of operational units and strove to develop practical solutions to the wide variety of financial and accounting problems that the Army faced at that time. Later, the global war on terrorism brought new challenges which required new solutions. In 2007, DFAS divested itself of all its remaining military personnel so those positions could be transferred to use of FINCOM, and use of FINCOM continued to perform the functions that required military personnel who could be sent into tactical arenas where contractors or civilians either were not authorized or for which they had to volunteer. The elimination of Army finance groups and finance commands also created the need for technical oversight and training of Army financial management companies, as well as the need for garrison oversight of deployment preparation and systems training, previously exercised under the predecessor groups and commands. In 2010, use of FINCOM was renamed the United States Army Financial Management Command, or use of FIMCOM. Use of FEMCOM has continued to evolve since then as the Army postured itself to meet the nation's current challenges. In 2015, the command was elevated to two-star level, and in 2017, it became a direct reporting unit to the Assistant Secretary of the Army, Financial Management and Comptroller. Just two years later, the Army saw the importance of aligning finance and comptroller with the Army's sustainment community, and in 2019, use of FEMCOM was realigned under the United States Army Material Command as a major subordinate unit. As, a, as the Army came out of the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan and refocused on the pacing challenge of China and the acute threat posed by Russia, Army leaders directed the most significant reorganization and technical innovation in the Finance Corps since the end of the Cold War. This was done so that commanders reached from the battlefield to the Joint Strategic Support Area for Finance Operations would be aligned to support large-scale combat operations and multi-domain operations necessary for the 21st century. Through this effort, the Army realigned its Finance Corps and operationalized use of FEMCOM by creating an Army Financial Management Center, AFMC, or AFMIC, under use of FEMCOM. <clears throat> In 2023, the 45th Finance Center, a unit with a legacy dating back to World War II and D-Day, was reactivated under Yusuf Fimcom to take on the AFMIC mission. Today, Yusuf Fimcom is the financial management operational lead for the total Army, including the Army National Guard and the Army Reserve. Yusuf Fimcom supports our soldiers around the world while sustaining our Army's financial readiness for the future. Use of FEMCOM also supports Army comptrollers who plan, program, budget, and execute congressional appropriations for all Army assets and mission areas to include logistics, training, deployments, sustainment, and other core mission capabilities. On behalf of the presiding officer, Lieutenant General Christopher O. Mohan, Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commander, United States Army Material Command, we would like to welcome to you to the United States Army Financial Management Command Change of Command Ceremony. This morning, we will honor Brigadier General Paige M. Jennings as she relinquishes command to Colonel Michelle M. Williams. Today's ceremony represents traditions going back to the birth of our Army in 1775. The presence of the Brass Quintet from the 38th Infantry Division Band, Indiana Army National Guard, led by Staff Sergeant Paul Mergen, represents the significant role martial music has played throughout history by instilling pride, loyalty, and courage in armies before battle. At this time, we would like to extend a warm welcome to the family of Brigadier General Jennings, her husband, Larry, 
daughter, Amanda, her son, Lawrence, who's joining us online, her parents, Alan and Natalie Stoll, who are also joining us on online from Missoula, Montana, her sister, Megan, her nieces, Adeline and Bryn Tiffin, her brother-in-law, Ben Tiffin, who's also joining us virtually, and her uncle and aunt, Jim and Kana Popno. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome, warm welcome to the family of Colonel Williams, her husband, Jeffrey Pouchet, and her parents, Lee and Cindy Williams. Thank you all for being with us today. We'd also like to welcome our distinguished guest, Mr. Sam Soderstrom, representing the Office of the Secretary of the Army, Ms. Heather Harvey, representing the United States Representative Andre Carson, Mr. Jacob Harkin, representing United States Senator Mike Braun, Indiana Representative Kerry Hamilton, Mr. Dennis Weimer, the Director of the Indiana Department of Veteran Affairs, Mr. Ronald Rice, the Director of the City of Lawrence Department of Veteran Services, the Senior Leadership of the Defense Finance and Accounting Service Indianapolis site, Mr. Aaron Gillison, Mr. Rick Davis, and Mr. Sean McCracken, Former use of FIMCOM Deputy of the Commanding General, Mr. Barry Hoffman now, with Hoffman, now with the United States Army Futures Command. The current, current use of FIMCOM Deputy of the Commanding General, Mr. Ryan Busby. Lieutenant General Paul Chamberlain, the Military Deputy to the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller. Brigadier General uh, Rebecca McElwain from the Army Budget Office. Command Sergeant Major Jimmy Sellers, the AMC Command Sergeant Major. Sergeant Major Terry Anderson, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Finance and Comptroller Sergeant Major. Retired General John Murray, who's joining us online. Retired Command Sergeant Major Paul Morissette. And the other state and local community representatives, general officers, members of the Senior Executive Service, Department of the Army Civilians, officers, non-commissioned officers, friends and families attending the ceremony or viewing it with us online. The earliest known use of ruffles and flourishes can be traced to the time of England's Lord Marlborough, hero of the War of Spanish Succession, who used kettle drums to announce his arrival. English, col English colonists brought the tradition to the colonies during the French and Indian War when two ruffles and present arms were given for Virginia's royal governor. In 1776, the Continental Army authorized a fife and drum unit to give ruffles equal to the number of stars a general possessed. For today's ceremony, Lieutenant General Mohan is deferring honors to Brigadier General Jennings, and one ruffle will be played in honor of Brigadier General Jennings. Today's official party consists of Lieutenant General Christopher O. Mohan, Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commanding General Army Materiel Command, Brigadier General Paige M. Jennings, the outgoing commander of the United States Army Financial Management Command, and Colonel Michelle N. Williams, the incoming commander of the United States Army Financial Management Command. At this time, please rise for the entrance of the official party, the rendering of honors to Brigadier General Paige Jennings, and remain standing for the playing of the National Anthem by the 38th Infantry Brass Quartet and the invocation by Ms. Rochelle, Rochelle Lassave.
Good morning. Please join me in your faith tradition as I lead this prayer. Lord, we thank you for this incredible occasion to come together to celebrate the transition from one leader to another. It has been a wonderful privilege to work with Brigadier General Paige Jennings. Her guidance and wisdom have launched our command forward, and we want to thank you for use of MCOM's time under her leadership. Please protect and guide General Jennings as she moves to her new role. We ask you to grant our incoming commander, Colonel Michelle Williams, the gifts of wisdom, courage, and strength as she assumes her new role. May her time commanding use of MCOM be one of blessings and growth for her, all our soldiers, civilians, and contractors of the United States Army Financial Management Command. We ask you this in your name, amen. Please be seated. At this time, Sergeant First Class Martinboro is presenting a small token of appreciation to Mr. Larry Jennings on behalf of the command. This small token shows the appreciation the men and women of the United States Army Financial Management Command and their families have for him. Thank you, Mr. Jennings, for your dedication and support over the years. You will forever be part of the Yusuf Imcom family. Sergeant First Class Brown is presenting a small welcoming token to Mr. Jeffrey Pouchet on behalf of the command. This represents the beginning of new relationships soon to be realized in the command and in the community. <clears throat> the change of command ceremony is a military tradition that can be traced back to the Middle Ages. The very soul of a military unit is symbolized by the colors under which it fights. For the colors record the glories of the past, stand guardian over the unit's present, and ensure inspiration for its future. History dictates that the colors lead the unit into battle. Lieutenant General Mohan will now be joined by Brigadier General Jennings, the outgoing commander, and Colonel Williams, the incoming commander, to conduct the change of command. The Command Sergeant Major, representing the backbone of the organization, is entrusted to safeguard the colors for the unit. What you're about to witness is Command Sergeant Major Allen passing the unit colors to the outgoing commander, Brigadier General Jennings, signifying her last act of allegiance to the outgoing commander. Brigadier General Jennings will pass the colors to Lieutenant General Mohan, signifying the relinquishing of her command and gratitude for the opportunity to lead the unit. Lieutenant General Mohan will then pass the colors to the incoming commander, Colonel Williams, entrusting her with the responsibility and care of the command. Colonel Williams returns the colors to Command Sergeant Major Allen for their care and safekeeping. By authority of paragraph 3-1A, Army Regulation 600-20, the undersigned assumes command of the United States Army Financial Management Command, effective 18 June 2024. Signed, Michelle N. Williams, Colonel, United States Army, Commanding.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Deputy Commanding General and Acting Commander of the United States Army Materiel Command, Lieutenant General Christopher Mohan. Well, good morning, everybody. How's everybody doing this morning? Hey, I tell you what, I didn't realize it got so hot in Indiana. <laughs> and uh, I am thankful we are indoors. So that's, uh, that's a really good call. Um, but uh, hey, Rachel, uh, where's Rachel? Thank you for that wonderful prayer. It's, uh, it is uh, important that we remember um, the origins of where we came from. So thank you. To the Brass Quartet, um, hey, thank you so much. Uh, 38th Infantry Division, and you guys are on point. And uh, so we really appreciate you guys being here because you add a lot to the, uh, to the ceremony. Look, the narrator, sir, is, he is, we've already introduced a whole bunch of people, but there's some folks that I, I think I need to, uh, to call out by name. Uh, first, uh, our CASA, um, Mr. Soderman. Hey, sir, thank you. Look, I have been a senior commander four times, and uh, the impact that CASAs have on our Army to carry our message um, both ways, you know, up to the building to the Secretary of the Army and also um, giving us feedback back and all the things you do in the, uh, in the local community. So thank you very much for your service. I know General Murray is on, online, sir. Thank you so much for, uh, for being here. Um, we've got um, uh, representatives from Mike Braun. Um, uh, we've got Mrs. Uh, Carrie Hamilton from the Indiana House of Representatives. Carrie, ma'am, where are you? Ma'am, thank you so much for, for being here. Um, my battle buddy, Paul Chamberlain, uh, Lieutenant General Paul Chamberlain is online. Paul, it's good to, uh, to hopefully have you online. Um, uh, uh, Brigadier General uh, McElwin, Rebecca, there you are. There you're here. Um, and then Mrs. Whitefield, or Whitfield, the mayor of Lawrence, uh, Indiana. Um, Ma'am, Mayor, where are you? Right here, the mayor here? Nope, okay. Um, and, and then, um, my battle buddy, Command Sergeant Major Jimmy Sellers, uh, is here. Flew in late last night. He was online listening to the session yesterday, which I, I want to thank the entire team for, uh, for doing that. Um, all you folks really made an impact on me and, and, uh, and part of my campaign of learning to really understand all that you do for our Army. So thank you uh, for that. Um, and then I also want to call out Command Sergeant Major Retired, uh, Paul Marcet. Sergeant Major, where are you? So. In every officer's life, in every general officer's life, I will tell you, there is that NCO, First Sergeant Griffin was mine, who said, hey, come here, Lieutenant, we gotta have a talk. <laughs> I heard that perhaps Command Sergeant Major Marset is that guy, not only for General Jennings, but also for General McElwin. And, uh, and here's what I'll say, job well done. Um, Command Sergeant Major, you did a great job with these two, uh, these two leaders, uh, particularly with, uh, with Paige. Look, elected officials, fellow officers, soldiers, Department of Army civilians, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for being here. As we not only recognize two great leaders, but really, as I said at the award ceremony, we do the award ceremony to talk about the individuals. This is about the unit. These changes of command are about the unit and about the colors, both the national colors, the Army colors, and then the individual colors of the, of the, uh, the unit. We're going to talk about the legacy that, um, that uh, Paige is going to leave after she's been here for three years of an incredibly successful um, uh, command tenure. Um, and then we're going to watch, we just watched the actual transition between one great leader to another great leader who's gonna pick up and, and carry that ball, if you will, into the next, into the next um, uh, generation. And so um, I'm just incredibly grateful that, um, that, I, that I'm allowed to stand up here. And these ceremonies are what's incredibly important for our Army because it binds us together. It's part of the fabric of our Army, which means it's part of the fabric of our nation. I like to tell people when I do these ceremonies to kind of take a look around who's sitting to your left and to the right. We come from every different background. Right? We come from different countries. You know, we come from um, uh, different races, different religions, um, and different places in our great nation. Um, but these ceremonies help bind us together because this is your army. Um, if you look around, this is your army. We reflect the values of our society, the good, the good things, all the good things that are, are about our society are reflected in America's army. And um, we, we do these ceremonies 
in auditoriums, on the field. I've seen them done on the back of a C, uh, C-17 ramp um, uh, deployed. I've seen them done in a FOB uh, deployed. I've seen them done in exercises. But it's incredibly important that we, we take time to honor the transition of leaders and, and then with the overall message that, hey, look, the Army keeps rolling along. And these units and the history of these units will continue um, as we pass the, the colors from one unit or of one individual to another. Um, I'm going to talk about what, what uh, FEMCOM has accomplished during page tenure. But before I do, I got to make some more um, so do some more recognitions of family members who are here. Um, Paige's husband, Larry, soon to be 31 years. And here's, here's a fun factoid. Yeah. We share the same anniversary. We, we were married and 31 years. Yep. Um, so uh, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> You made it, right? Um, so Larry serves as the Department of Chief Engineer supporting Army Theater Operations in the MITRE Army Division. Again, connected deeply to the Army, has been connected deeply to the Army. And so Larry, I just want to say thank you for your service. Their daughter, Amanda, uh, just finished her first year of medical school. Um, and so Amanda, congratulations. Um, and then their son, um, uh, Lawrence, did I get that right? And he is watching online, and he just finished his freshman year of college at Arizona State, and so uh, unable to be here. Um, Paige's mom and dad, uh, Alan and Natalie Stoll from Missoula, Montana. I asked if it was still snowing up there, and, uh, and I said it as a joke, and Paige's sister said, well, actually, we were under a winter storm warning yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> well, there ain't no winter storm outside. <laughs> um, Paige's sister, uh, Megan's here. Uh, Adeline and Bren, uh, also from Missoula, ladies, welcome. Um, and then uh, Paige's um, uh, son or uh, brother-in-law, Ben, is, is also watching online while his wife comes here. And a, another great story of the Army family, right, is they come here, they see a ceremony, and then they're going to pack up and they're headed to D.C. Um, with the Jennings uh, to help them get settled in. Um, and look, if you find a soldier, there's always been family members that have done that. Um, I have sister-in-laws that did the same thing. Um, uh, one, we really wanted to come down. The other one, maybe not so much. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but they came uh, regardless. Um, but also, we have this extended army family that travels from all over. And um, I want to, uh, Jim and Kaya, Kana, Popno, from Selburn, Texas, uh, has come up, come up to watch this change of command. So uh, thank you so much for being here. And um, look, again, big Army families, we moved together, we served together, and so let's give them a big round of applause for being here. <laughs> and we also have the Williams family. Uh, Michelle's husband of 14 year, Captain Retired, Jeff Pache. And look, when I say captain retired, he's a captain in the Coast Guard. Um, so, uh, so as we all know, that's a colonel. And oh, by the way, hey, you've got good taste in booze. Um, so I just want to say um, up front, Buffalo Trace and Eagle River, right? Um, right? Did, uh, Eagle Rare. Eagle, oh, even better. Um, so maybe you want to hit them up at the reception or something like that. But Jeff is, um, like I said, he's retired from the U.S. Coast Guard. He was also a pilot for, um, for Delta Airlines. And, uh, and I heard he's a really good chef. Um, and so, uh, yeah, okay, making progress. Michelle's parents, Lee and Cindy Williams of Delaware, Ohio, are here as well. So thank you. And, and here's another, um, another milestone, uh, 53 years of marriage. Um, so that deserves a round of applause. The late General Ray Odenaro always said that the strength of our soldiers are their families. And that is certainly true here that what we've seen demonstrated. And look, time and time and time again, strong families mean strong soldiers. I want to say a quick word to the 1,200 men and women of this command. I know you have a tough job. Managing the accounting system for a multi-billion dollar worldwide financial operation is, is one thing. 
right? But you do it for an, for an organization that is constantly in, in motion, either um, training exercises, deployments, real world uh, contingencies that, that happen in the drop of the hat. We were talking about the requirement to move, was it $24 million in less than 24 hours? Um, that seems like just a daily occurrence in this place. Um, and while you're doing that, we're constantly innovating and the, the world is changing. I met with the, uh, the Eagle Cash people and they said, hey, look, this is, we're moving to the next system. We're moving because we've got to, we've got to move forward. Otherwise we will be left behind. Um, and then, you know, the dashboard I saw yesterday was, was represented in hundreds of millions of dollars that, uh, that they are responsible for. Um, and, and I'm talking like literally hundreds of millions of dollars that, uh, that they have, that our tax dollars and that we have trusted this organization for safekeeping, uh, for accountability, for auditing. Um, now to the average person, uh, it, it seems like that would be an impossible task. Global organization, small footprint relatively um, compared to all the things we ask you to do. Um, but for this team, you just do it. You just get it done. And, uh, and I will tell you that, um, look, I've been a sustainer for, for 35 years. Um, I have relatively little experience in the financial management. Um, and uh, you know why? Because you're so good at it. You're so good at it. It just kind of happens. Um, you know, you ask me questions about um, logistics, civil aug augmentation program, I'm all over it. Army preposition stocks, all over it. Um, finance. It just happens, and it's because you're so good at, uh, at what you do. And why you're so good at it? It's because of the people. It's because of the people um, and the stability of our Department of Army civilians that, that stand the test of time and do the continuity that, uh, that keeps us together and keeps us moving in the same, uh, in the same direction. Um, but People need leaders. And over the past three years, um, strong leadership um, is a requirement for a dynamic organization. And that strong leadership has been uh, fulfilled by Brigadier General Paige Jennings. I can't cover all the accomplishments that you have done uh, under Paige's command, but I do want to give you just a couple of highlights. Probably the one that struck me the, as, the, uh, as, the, as the biggest accomplishment and probably the, the um, the, the most um, impactful is the integration of the payoffs that transferred over from the defense finance and accounting service. Um, that was a huge change uh, in the past couple of years. Added not only a thousand teammates, um, but 49 separate locations and that dramatically increased the size and scope of the unit's mission. And we're not done. So just last month, they added Korea. Uh, the the, uh, the AMPO in Korea now is, is part of the formation as well. Every year, this command processes nearly 5 million pay transactions and more than 100,000 travel vouchers. Think about that. Page saw um, some structural challenges with the pay offices and impl implemented several changes that have already produced positive results, including, again, people, including grading our teammates at the proper pay grade to recognize the responsibility they carry, and then also pushing down, um, pushing down responsibility for execution to let the people who do the work um, and the leaders that are on the line make the decisions on the line. These changes not only improved efficiency and effectiveness, but they also enhance service delivery so that our soldiers receive pay, um, their pay when it's expected. And let me tell you something, if a soldier's pay is messed up, the family's pay is messed up. And if the family's pay is messed up, that's a primary reason for soldiers to walk. And when I say walk, they leave the army. Because if we can't keep the family, we rarely keep the soldier. And I'll just say that. So what you do is incredibly important uh, for our army and our army families. But speaking of army families, hey, for those of you who hadn't, uh, that don't know, spousal employment is a tremendous uh, challenge for our army because we move. Look, how many, how many moves? 10? Yeah, 18. We've moved 18 times. Uh, my wife's a school teacher 
And it's been incredibly difficult for her, not only just the licensing thing, um, but it's been incredibly difficult for her to, to transition uh, careers. But we've had some, some groundswell grassroots movements that, uh, that, have, that have helped with that. And Paige, you and your team have been on the front edge of that. Um, so they have a spousal, a, uh, a, a, um, a spousal employment program where they hire our military spouses out in the field and then they transition them with their jobs to their soldiers new duty station um, for that is incredibly impactful the number one reason when i was the commander of 21st tsc uh, in germany the number one reason we had early return of dependents in, in germany was because our spouses look we're two income families for the most part our spouses had problems finding job which led to Marital strife, money problems, which led to marital strife, which left, led to them leaving. We're on our way to solving some of that. And what you're doing here is absolutely what we need to do. Um, and we have to do that for, the, for, for, us to, in order to, for us to retain the right kind of people in our army. So now 15% of the pay officers workforce are part of that spousal employment program. And that's, that's a start. Um, but uh, Michelle, you got to keep working that one because it's incredibly important. Just last year, Paige also oversaw the activation and integration of the 45th Finance Center under FEMCOM. This addition had the effect of operationalizing the command and enabled it to really provide that theater level planning and operations um, uh, out in the field at the different theaters. It will now help those theater sustainment commands in setting and preparing the theaters um, as we prepare our overseas units and our CONUS-based units uh, for the, the potential for large-scale ground combat. Uh, again, those are just a few of the highlights and there are many more. But overall, it's been said that one's contribution to the battle is not measured by one's proximity to the battlefield. And that is certainly true for the men and women of this command. And that's been certainly true for their leader over the past three years. Um, Paige, on behalf of the entire leadership team of Army Material Command, um, our Army leadership, uh, because everybody knows who FEMCOM is and because of what you do. Um, I want to say thank you very much in a very heartfelt, look, <laughs> I would say uh, good luck at your next assignment. You know, I always say it changes command and, and promotions, um, or actually when I talk, really when I talk to pre-command courses, lieutenant colonels and colonels, um, I say, hey, look, enjoy your time in command because when you get done, we're going to ship your butt to the Pentagon. <laughs> And that's exactly what's happening to this general. We're shipping her butt to the Pentagon, where she is going to be the director of uh, the J-1 or the personnel officer for the joint staff at the Pentagon. Hey, that's a tough job, um, but you're going to kill it. Um, and I don't. Ha do you have any personnel experience? Yes, sir. A little bit. You're going to do just fine, and uh, and uh, and they're going to be better served in a in a better headquarters and a joint staff because of you. So please. Join me in a round of applause for the Jennings family. So transitions are tough, right? But transitions are part of our army. And again, part of that fabric that makes us who we are um, because the transitions are about leaders, um, but the colors always stay and the units always stay. And the good news and the great news is that, um, is that we've got an incredibly uh, capable leader within that will continue to live that patience. The kind of know of this organization um, must be a technical expert uh, because you got to roll your sleeves up and you work, right? you got to be a master at organizational design um, because um, there's still work to be done as this organization continues to be operationalized. Um, and we are incredibly blessed that Colonel Michelle uh, Williams is that leader and she is that expert. Um, during her 25 year career, she is custom made for this job. Uh, her 25 year career, she has held several financial management and resourcing assignments across the world, both in command and staff positions, um, from the tactical to the strategic. She was the G8 for the 18th Airborne Corps. And in that role, she was responsible for resourcing three incredibly complex deployments to CENTCOM, UCOM and AFRICOM where she oversaw portfolio, portfolios worth billions of dollars. Um, now look, the 18th Airborne Corps 
is the, uh, the nation's 911 force. The Marines like to say it, but, um, but look around when things are bad, and uh, what do you see is the United States Army, and a lot of those folks that you see is the 18th Airborne Corps, uh, and Michelle managed the budget for that and for some very dynamic leaders um, who didn't like it when you said, no, there's no more money. Um, <laughs> she was also the first female chief of the Congressional Budget Liaison, where she worked closely with congressional appropriators and senior army leaders to ensure our service was adequately funded. Hey, sounds like a boring job, but that is one of the most important jobs that, uh, that we have in the Pentagon. And Michelle did that job. Um, now, Michelle comes to us after serving as the first female chief of finance corps of the finance corps and the 42nd commandant of the finance and comptroller school so again establishing that credibility walking in the door knowing what to do being part of the force design update that created femcom being part of the schoolhouse that that manages a pipeline of our soldiers that go out to the field um, she knows how to do that um, uh, now michelle did a phenomenal job at uh, Fort Jackson, and that's why she's uh, sitting there in that chair today, because the Army has recognized her leadership and her potential. And again, um, she is the absolute right person for this assignment. So Michelle, it is my honor to officially welcome you as the new commander of the U.S. Army Financial Management Command, and I look forward to serving shoulder to shoulder with you and Jeff as we move into the future, because we've got a lot of work to do. And we talked a little bit about that yesterday, but um, it's, a, it's a great place to be. So, uh, so ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michelle with a round of applause. <laughs> and finally, to the men and women of FEMCOM, um, we couldn't be prouder of what you do. You're on the line every day. Um, and, and if you fail, uh, our Army fails. And so uh, I want to thank you uh, for what you do, and uh, and I am incredibly proud to say that um, that I am teammates with such a, a great group of, prof of professionals. Now, look, you've been in great hands with um, with Paige, but you're in great hands now with uh, Michelle, and I know that you will continue to support Michelle just as you have supported Paige as we move to the next chapter. Um, and uh, and I just am just really proud to be up here. Uh, so thanks, everybody, for being here, taking the time to, to, uh, to attend this ceremony. This will defend, uh, be all you can be, and God bless you all. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, the outgoing commander, Brigadier General Paige M. Jennings. Where's Valerie? Thank you for my tissues. <laughs> they know me too well. So, good morning, everyone. Rochelle, thank you for the wonderful invocation. To the Brass Quintet from the 38th Infantry Division, thank you for performing today. We really appreciate, and I'll talk a little bit later but this is representative of our Army because it's about the active component, the Guard, and the Reserve. So thank you for being here today. There's a few other uh, distinguished visitors that I would like to mention by name. Oops, hang on, here we go. Mr. Soderstrom, you have been a constant in the three years I've been here. Every time we have a ceremony, you are here without fail. You are the best CASA that anybody could ever ask for. Thank you. Online, General Murray, Lieutenant General Retired Cardone. Gentlemen, thank you. Without you, I would not be standing here today leading this formation. Ms. Hamilton, Honorable Robert Spear, Ms. Whitefield, Ms. Harvey, Mr. Harkin, Ms. Petty, thank you for joining us here today. We really appreciate you. From ASA FMNC, joining us online, Lieutenant General Chamberlain, Mr. Cook, in in person, Sergeant Major Anderson, Brigadier General Rebecca McElwain and her husband James. Rebecca, 
Thank you to you, my other battle buddy, and Sarah. So glad I'm on this journey with you. From Defense Finance and Accounting Service, Mr. Gillison, you are a true mentor and a friend to DOD and the Army. Thank you, sir, for all you have done for us. We truly appreciate you. Mr. Rick Davis, Mr. Sean McCracken, thank you so much for your partnership and for being here. Mr. Mike Kelly, Rafino President, thank you very much for coming. Some of my other battle buddies that I got to call out, Les Barnett, Colonel Les Barnett right there, Colonel retired Landon Moxley, Colonel retired Mike Hagerty, online Colonel retired Jim Davis, Colonel retired Brian Smith. Virtually, as well, Lieutenant General Thomas Horlander, Colonel Mike May, and the one constant, I'm going to say who raised me, Command Sergeant Major Paul Morissette. Sergeant Major, you've been there from the beginning. You were there when I pinned on one star, and you are here now. Thank you does not justify everything that you've continued to do for me. As I said last February at the State House, I love you. Thank you. I want to give a special shout out to Army Materiel Command. Lieutenant General Mohan commands our Major Sellers and General Retired Daily, Ms. Wicker, and all the other ASA, FMNC leadership, along with AMC. The other leaders at Defense Finance and Accounting Service, the Army G1, Human Resources Command, specifically Brigadier General Johnson, the Adjutant General our Finance and Comptroller School, our Adjutant General School, and the Soldier Support Institute. That group is the stakeholders that have helped propel this command forward and will continue to do so. I want to thank our friends and family who are here and who have been listening online. Many of you are why we are standing here successful today. I also want to thank all of our elected other officials, friends, family, use of FIMCOM employees, and other people around the world who support Yusuf Imcom and what we do. To my family, I want to recognize my mother and father, both lifelong educators who have been married. What year are we at? 50, come on, I'm 55 years, 56 in July. Lifelong educators who put me on this path and helped my sister become who we are. To my sister and my best friend, Megan, I love you. You've been here at all these events, and I'm so glad you're here. To my little nieces, Adeline and Bryn, thank you. To Amanda here in person and our son, Lawrence, I could not be prouder of you. When we started three years ago, you were thinking about going to medical school. Lawrence was getting ready to go to college. Now you've just finished your first year of medical school, and Lawrence is entering his senior year in college. Jim and Kena, I know that my brother-in-law gets to claim you by blood, but you're mine now. <laughs> to all of you, your love and support has been instrumental along this way, and I'm so excited that we're on the journey. Honey, we started this 31 years ago. I'm so lucky to have you by my side, along with Amanda and Lawrence, as we embark on yet another journey. I couldn't be more proud to be your wife and your mother. Thank you. Almost three years ago, I assumed command in this very building downstairs in our auditorium with a much smaller crowd. Mr. Soderstrom, you were there. <laughs> Mr. Gillison, I believe you were there too as well, sir. Because why? It was the height of COVID, so we couldn't put anybody in that darn auditorium. <laughs> but I will tell you, three years ago, I had no idea what this command did, short of they had lead defense travel administrators. Outside of that, I really didn't know what this command did. That should tell you something, why we have done what we have done. I'm in the Finance Corps, and I don't really truly understand what this command does. So we had a journey, and we had a mission to take on. But that has quickly changed, because I will tell you, now I am their biggest champion. And when I leave here today, Michelle, that will not end. What some of you may not know is what they do for us and what they do for our finance corps. They have been in lockstep 
this command with our Army from the very beginning. The Finance Corps was created two days after we established the Army. On June 16, 1775, we established the position of the Paymaster General, and since then, the Army Finance Corps has continued to pay and ensure that we win battles around the globe. During the last 249 years, the Army's strategies and tactics have evolved, but the ever-changing world has required constant innovation from the U.S. Army to maintain its competitive advantage, and throughout time, the Army's Finance Corps, our civilians, and our military have been there to meet the needs. Today marks the third change of command since the establishment of this command as a two-star command almost 10 years ago. Yes, you heard me right. The command that Michelle just assumed here minutes ago has gone through numerous changes over the last seven year, several years, but nothing so much more than since the last four, we have grown from 200 people to over 1,200, and in the next year, we'll go close to 1,400 with a worldwide mission. We have partnered with the 8th Army in Korea to stand up our pay office in Korea, and we are now partnering with the USERAF and the 21st Theater Sustainment Command to help run their pay center in Europe. To build the Army of 2030 capable of meeting these challenges, the Army has determined several things. It's got to concentrate highly lethal, low signature combat forces. We have to deliver precision, long range fires. We have to be secure from enemy cyber and electronic attacks. And we have to be able to sustain the fight across contested terrain and over time. All of these efforts have one thing in common, money. American citizens entrust our Army with our heart and money. And here at USA FEMCOM, with all of our other financial management professionals, we have the solemn responsibility to ensure every dollar is dispersed and accounted for and can be auditable, whether in garrison or on the battlefield. To meet these challenges over the last three years, we have worked to integrate and operationalize use of IMCOM. You heard Lieutenant General Mohan talk about a couple of those. To do this, there has been one constant in the last three years. We have made sure that we integrate and collaborate with everything with the stakeholders, Defense Finance and Accounting Service, Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller, and most importantly, the Guard and the Reserve. See, many of you don't realize finance is the smallest branch of the Army, and two-thirds of our operational forces reside in the Guard and the Reserve. So when we talk about making sure that we are ready to support the next fight, we do it as one team, active Guard and Reserve. What I would like to do, if you indulge me, I want to highlight a couple of things that Lieutenant General Mohan didn't have the opportunity to highlight. Army Financial Services, under the direction of Mr. Ken Crowder, we call them the Army's bank. With responsibilities for electronic commerce, banking, financial management oversight, support to classified and sensitive activities, they have worked tirelessly over the last three years to support the operational Army to include the stand-up and the partnering with U.S. Army Special Operations Command on counter threat finance and the finance for operational effects. They have taken over the program management for the financial tactical platform. For everybody out there, that is how we do our business on the battlefield. And they have done yeoman's work training with our industry partner, Armed Forces Bank, to develop and implement a short banking course that ensures all three components of soldiers understand what it means to a banking officer to go into a theater and to be able to open it up. Because at the end of the day, the logisticians can't get what they need, the contracting officers can't contract out without one thing, money. And that is, comes down to our organization. And lastly, the operational support team has trained and evaluated every finance unit deploying or preparing to deploy somewhere in the world, in addition to training countless civilians and soldiers who come through here for the breadth of financial operations and resource management training. Our system support operations under the direction of Ms. Joanne Zillick. They directly have supported the day-to-day -day operations for the Army's enterprise resource planning systems. For you out there, our accounting and our logistical systems, which make the Army run and account for and do everything that we have to do. They ensure the Army has asset accountability of everything we own. That's a large process we're still working through. A focus on data analytics, governance, audit integration, 
and more importantly, how we plan for those same future systems. Our Army Audit and Accounting Operations, otherwise known as A3O, under the direction of Ms. Denise Gallion and her team, they have been working tirelessly with the Assistant Secretary of the Army Financial Management Comptroller and Defense Finance and Accounting Service to ensure that we increase the Army's purchasing power through auditability and accountability of our funds. They are leading critical areas for the Army's audit roadmap, critical in order for the Army to become audible so that Congress gives us our money. And yes, Michelle, your name's on a piece of paper that you have to report back to the under, so get ready. <laughs> Our process management and compliance under the direction of Mr. Chris Reynolds. They have continued to document and modernize the Army's standardized business processes and processes maps to facilitate the audit process, but to ensure the Army is also running smoothly and they partner with everybody else. You've heard a theme here, right? The Army has to become auditable. Congress holds our purse strings, and we have got to obtain an audit opinion, and this command is central to helping the Army do that. Military pay operations, I want to hit it under. Ms. Susan Gillison, our director, and yes, Mr. Gillison, Ms. Susan Gillison, they are a power couple in this building. <laughs> Big shout out to you and the Army Military Pay Offices. What you do for our soldiers and our families cannot be understated. Our Network Audit and Field Compliance Division, NAVCD under the director of Aaron Parker, they provide the oversight training inspection for all these military pay offices worldwide to ensure that they are doing things right. And lastly, our 45th Finance Center, under the direction of the Deputy Director, Acting Director, Lieutenant Colonel Jason Sick and Sergeant Major Hansinger. We activated that unit here in October. What you probably don't realize is that the 45th Finance Center had a storied history that started right here in 1943 at Fort Ben Harrison and continued on through World War II until 1994, and they have now been activated under us, and they are the operational arm for the Army. But all the directorates and the finance center that I just talked about can't operate without the critical staff. G1 under Mel Uten and her team, G2 and G3 under Mark Burton, Sar Major Harris, Mr. Thomas, Major Wright, G4, Mr. Onlage, G6, Richard Dillon, or G8, Jody Hogan and her team. Our special staff, our EEO, Ms. Wilder, our IG, J.P. Peterson and his team, our legal, Joby and Parvinder and Akshanika, our strategic initiatives under Mr. Don Houston, our executive staff, Monica, and our SGS, Ms. Valerie. Why did I take the time to go through all of this? General Mohan said it. He talked about the operationalizing. Most of what I just read didn't exist to the extent it exists three years ago. Most of our staff had one to two people in it because it was still a staff built for 200, not soon to be 1,400. EEO had just come on. IG didn't exist. We didn't have a G4. Our legal team was one deep, and Joby will tell you he pulled his hair out every day. <laughs> to my right-hand team, Chief of Staff, Colonel Les Barnett, Colonel Mac Crum, and now Colonel Kevin Pierce, to our Deputy Chief of Staff, Brett Dunn. You have taken, you have implemented a battle rhythm, you have implemented policies, procedures, that this command now runs with precision, that I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is sit back and make decisions. Thank you. That was our goal three years ago. They're ready for you, Michelle. As everybody knows, you don't do anything without great senior NCOs, and I've been blessed throughout my entire career, and it takes a lot of them. Started with Command Sergeant Major Paul Marset. When I got here, Command Sergeant Major Kenneth Law, which I believe is listening online, and Command Sergeant Major Joy Allen. I couldn't have asked for a better teammate to come on to help steer this command to where it's going. I appreciate you, love you, like family. So everybody knows, it's pretty cool, her and I are one day apart on our birthday. 
There's something about some Sagittarius. I don't know. <laughs> to my former deputy, Mr. Barry Hoffman, thank you for doing what you did for us. Ryan Busby, thank you for coming in. You are a wealth of knowledge, and you are the right person in the job to continue to take us forth with where we need to go. To everybody I just mentioned, you have focused on talent management and hiring the right people. You have driven fiscal precision and audit. You have started to integrate data analytics and artificial intelligence and other opportunities that will increase your efficiency and your effectiveness as we work to account and safeguard the Army's resources. But above all, you have become a command that is proactively operating with synergy and autonomy to support Army Materiel Command, the Assistant Secretary of the Army for Financial Management and Comptroller, Defense Finance and Accounting Service, and the Army as a whole. I couldn't be prouder of all that you have accomplished. Three years ago, I stood down in the auditorium and I made you the following promise. I would give you everything I have to match you one for one in your efforts to serve and improve our Army. I would listen and respect you as subject matter experts. I would give you the guidance and the direction you need to align your goals with those of the Army. I would fight for you to have the resources and time you needed to be successful. And I would communicate clearly with you and provide clear-cut expectations. That last one probably got a little squirrely, as Sergeant Major calls me squirrely. I didn't promise time management, because you know I'm awful at it. <laughs> and all I asked in return was that you did four simple things. Continue to innovate and move us forward. Keep service at the forefront of everything you do. Take care of yourselves, your families, and one another. Denise, I'm not going to look at you. <laughs> Continue to care as much for our Army as you do each day. Simply, you have done that and so much more. Thank you doesn't even begin to tell you. To the men and women under use of FEMCOM, the teammates I have mentioned here, Colonel Williams is the right person to take this command. One of my battle buddies running around the Pentagon, I've known her for a long time. To you and Jeff, I couldn't be happier to entrust it to you. Mr. and Mrs. Williams, you should be very proud of your daughter. Michelle, as you take command, give them everything. To my team, I have just given up. Give her 110% just like you gave me. I know that she will give you that in return. Support her and trust her like you did for me. She will not let you down. Michelle, take care of the men and women of this command. Care for them. Guide them. Mentor them. Lead them. But above all, love them. The Army may not know everything about this command, but they are paying attention. As so many of our senior leaders have said to me over the last three years, I don't really understand all of the things you do, but I know if you go away, the Army will break. As I prepared for this day, I've given a lot of thought about what the future holds for use of FEMCOM, for the Army and our higher headquarters for Army Materiel Command. As the only service, and I said that right, the Army is the only service that has a command like us. The Army has the right team under the leadership of Colonel Williams, the command team, the staff, and the directorates. And I want to reflect back to a very simple book with a lot of meaning that many of you have probably read to your children. And I want to leave you with just a few lines. It is called, Oh, the Places That You Will Go by Dr. Seuss. Why, you ask? Because the command that I am turning and just turned over to you in its current configuration with the current mission set is still very young with a lot of experts, but growing fast. Give them your guidance and your mentorship. Use of FEMCOM, congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. You're on your own, and you know what to do, and you are the team who will decide where to go. You look up and down the streets or across the world. 
Look them over with care, and about some you will say, I don't choose to go there, but you may have to. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, and you're too smart to go down any not-so-good street, you may not find any you'll want to go down, and in that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town, and Colonel Williams will direct you right back. <laughs> oh, the places you will go. You'll be on your way up. You will be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You will not lag behind because you have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang, and you will soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you will always be the best of the best. And wherever you go, you will top all the rest. So be sure when you step, step with care and great tact. And remember that life's a great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deaf, and never mix up your right foot with your left. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Use of FEMCOM, you will move mountains. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Service to soldiers, winning matters. This will defend. Ladies and gentlemen, the commander of the United States Army Financial Management Command, Colonel Michelle M. Williams. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so for the third time, I'm not going to go through everybody here. Um, our distinguished leaders, guests, um, elected officials, thank you all for attending today's ceremony. Um, and I kind of feel like this is deja vu, like I just did this a week or two ago, so. <laughs> um, nevertheless, it's with deep humility that I stand before you on this joyous day. Sir, thank you for your kind and thoughtful words. Jeff and I look forward to joining you and Cindy and in integrating this command and not being a bolt-on command. So we look forward to that within our sustainment community. Brigadier General Jennings and Larry. There you are, Larry. Okay, good. Thank you so much for your warm welcome. Jeff and I truly value your genuine friendship and leadership. Ma'am, thank you for your leadership. Yes, right around the halls of the Pentagon to here today. And you've built the foundation of this command, and we greatly appreciate you doing that. Jeff and I wish you and Larry the best of luck in your next assignment on the Joint Staff. Serving on the Joint Staff was actually one of my fondest memories of my 25 military career. Enjoy your time on the Joint Staff. Command Sergeant Major Allen, I look forward to working with you side by side, collaborating seamlessly on a daily basis. And we're going to exceed the United States Army Financial Management Command's mission. Jeff, thank you for being my battle buddy and always being by my side. Um, save some of that bourbon for later on tonight, please. Don't drink it all. <laughs> um, Mom and Dad, I wouldn't be here with you today, so thank you for that. And the uh, Dr. Seuss book, I believe you gave that same book to me when I graduated from high school. So, great fond memories of that one. I do sincerely appreciate everyone making the effort to join today's ceremony, whether you've traveled from afar, online, amidst your busy day. To the men and women of the United States Army Financial Management Command, I'm excited to work closely with you, each and every one of you. You are doing a phenomenal job. You have done a phenomenal job, and it is a thankless job. And I greatly appreciate you exceeding the highest standards by being adaptive and innovative in supporting our ever-changing Army. Financial stewardship, accountability, compliance, Auditability and readiness are of the utmost importance. Our command, as you have heard countless times this morning, directly supports military operations and ensures our resources are used efficiently. We will ensure that we operate with the highest integrity, transparency, and innovation in all financial practices, while maintaining our financial readiness in supporting our Army's mission. 
As the 45th Finance Center continues its journey towards a normal operating union or fully, fully operational capability, we will ensure robust and accurate theater level finance planning for large scale combat operations. We're also gonna to continue to standardize and modernize our Army military pay offices. We have empowered our dedicated staff to achieve success and ensuring our soldiers' financial readiness is there to better support their families, going back to what you said earlier today, sir. And of course, we'll have lots of data analytics, maybe some artificial intelligence and machine learning in our future. You can always count on me. I will never let you down. I look forward to integrating and immersing myself in the Fort Bend, Lawrence, and greater Indianapolis, Indianapolis community. To the soldiers, civilians, and family members of the United States Army Financial Management Command, I'm honored to be your commander. Thank you all for being here today. Service to soldiers, this will defend, be all you can be. I was going to say, please rise, but everyone has already risen. Please remain standing for the playing of the Army song and the departure for the official party. The words of the Army song are printed on the back cover of your program. Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask that you remain at your seats until the family members of Brigadier General Jennings and Colonel Williams are escorted from the ceremony. Please feel free to join Lieutenant General Mohan as he congratulates Brigadier General Jennings and family at the front of the auditorium and welcomes Colonel Williams and family to use of FEMCOM at the reception located at the rear of the auditorium. The receiving line will start to my right, your left. This concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for attending. Service to soldiers, winning matters, this will defend. <laughs>